Hey guys, welcome to my course, Jordi here. In this lesson, I want to go through the effects library because that is the thing we are going to work with in this course. So I think it's very important to first know what tools we have and where we can find them. So I've currently made my workspace in that order so that you can very clearly see the effects library. And as an example, I have this uh, live performance here of a band. Uh, it's one of my friends, by the way, here. And I'm just filming from the crowd, but that's not important. So let's just dive into it here, guys. On the left here, you can see my effects library, actually. And I'm just going to open up the video effects because that is the thing we're going to work in. And let me explain each folder in here now. First of all, we're going to start with adjustments. What does that mean, adjust? Something which is already there, that is the thing we're going to adjust. So when we're taking a look at the image right here, what is already there, and that is actually only colors and contrast. And that is a thing we can adjust here. Uh, so we've got auto color, auto contrast, uh, extract, that means we can extract a color from it. Um, we can adjust the shadows, highlights, the levels, and all that kind of stuff. So it's actually more for color grading. So we're going to work less with the adjustment effects. Now there's one thing in here, which I think is actually a little bit misplaced, and that is the lighting effects. Let me just drag that onto my clip, and you can see what it does here. It's actually a virtual light that we have. In my opinion, this is more like a generated item. And you can see that we also have a generate uh, folder right here. So I'd say that the lighting effects should be in there. But hey, that's just my opinion. So it's not always that convenient to find your effects within the folder you think it's in. I would personally search in the generate folder if I was looking for something like a virtual light but it's in the adjustment folder. So that's why it's very important to follow this lesson very good uh, so that you know what we can find where. All right, so that's for the adjust folder. The next thing is blur and sharpen. And as the name says, we're going to blur and sharpen. Now there are only two sharpen effects, the normal sharpen, which is a very basic effect. And then we have the unsharp mask. So for those of you who are also working in photography and Photoshop, you also have the unsharp mask when you're working on raw photos. Uh, anyways, uh, for blurriness, there is much more that we can do. We can add a camera blur, for example, uh, which gives you that blurriness of, a, of an out of focus item uh, that the camera creates. We can blur each channel separately, and now I'm talking about the RGB channel, red, blue, and green. Um, then we got the compound blur, directional blur, fast blur, which is the standard actually, Gaussian blur, ghosting, all types of blurriness. So whenever you think like, I wanna do something with blur, you know that you have multiple options to do something with that. All right, guys, so then the next thing is the channel folder. And like I was saying before, the channel is the uh, RGB channel, and we can do things with that. We can we can blend those together. We can do calculations um, that we can invert the channels. Okay, let me just show you that. If I invert that, we got a negative. Here you can see on what channel we would like to invert. We can also say to just invert the red channel. So each effect has multiple options uh, in most cases. Uh, if you're saying like, I want to invert, then you might think, oh no, that's only going to be uh, a negative uh, look that I'm going to create. Well, it's actually not. We got more options within the invert plugin. So guys, this is actually more for color grading. So we're going to work less with the channel uh, folder actually. Then we have the color correction folder. And again, as the name says, this has everything to do with colors and contrast and the gamma and luma and all those kind of things. This is definitely something for color correction as the folder name also says. Also something we're going to work less with. Uh, so I'm not going to explain all these things in here. Um, it's just to do something with your colors and contrast. I think this is pretty obvious here, guys. Uh, one of the things that I use a lot is the RGB curves, which is, gives you the RGB curves like that. Very basic uh, color correction tool. And also the three-way color corrector, which gives you those uh, three wheels here actually to adjust your highlights, uh, midtones, and shadows uh, for the colors. You can also change the contrast in here. Um, so you don't always need to use each plugin that you can find in here. All right, guys, then the next thing is distort. And here it's getting more interested for us when we're talking about special effects within Premiere Pro. 
as the name says, we are going to distort something. And for example, I'm just going to take here the corner pin, I'm just going to drag that onto my uh, effect controls. If I select the effect, I can just change that in real time. So as you can see, you can really distort the image. And that is something interesting for us because here it's getting uh, more like uh, an After Effects feeling that we actually have here. Uh, we can do a lens distortion, uh, magnify something, mirror, also a very cool effect. Um, let's say that I'm going to mirror that for a 90% and look at that. <laughs> so it's like an effect you see in iMovie or something. Then we can find more things like these, uh, spheroids, we can transform, twirl, I see you already know what twirl does a little bit here. It just twirls your image like that. Now it doesn't always look that very professional when you add that on just a normal clip. It's always with combining multiple effects, uh, combining titles onto it, uh, making animations of course. When we're going to animate the, uh, the angle here, the twirl, that it twirls out or something, then it could be a very good looking effect of course. Alright guys, then the next thing, generate. Very interesting folder here also. What we're going to do is we're going to generate a new item. Always think in that new item way here, guys. Uh, so for example, when I'm going to take a cell pattern or a four color gradient, doesn't matter here. You can see that the whole video actually goes away and we're actually generating a whole new thing. So what we're going to do here in most cases is just create a solid, a, a null object where we can add these generated items on. You can see that we can position these colors anywhere we want. So we can really create like this plasma screen with this if you want to create something like that. Now there are also uh, generated items that do not affect your video. Like for example, the lens flare that is a generated item on top of our video like that. Here we have a lens flare. You can even choose the type of lens flare that you want. Uh, then we got here lighting and that is not the lighting effect from the adjustment uh, folder right here, but that is actual lighting, so thunder actually. I'm just going to increase the, the white here and you can see it a little bit better here. Look at that, what we can create. You can create thunder within uh, Premiere Pro, isn't that cool guys here? So that's why I was thinking that the um, lighting effect from the adjustment uh, folder should be in the generated actually. It would be more clear to me personally. Um, what else do we have here? We can uh, write something, uh, we've got a paint bucket uh, and so on guys, you can create a grid. All types of generated items. Then image control, again guys, this is for the color grading, black and white for example, if you want to create a black and white uh, video. Again, something that we're going to less use actually, um, maybe in some parts, but uh, this course is not about color grading, it's about doing special effects. So we're going to work less with the colors. We are more interested actually in generating items, distorting items. Then we've got keying, again, something we're going to work less with. Um, that means we're going to cut off a piece from the video that could be a green key or a blue screen key. In the past, people would use the chroma key, but we currently have the ultra key, and that is a very good one in Premiere to actually do a green key if you want, or a blue key. Now, one of the things that we're definitely going to use in this course is the four point garbage mat. We also have an eight point and a 16 point. So let me just add that 16 point to it. And what that does is it, it gives you these points and it's actually a mask. If you're a little bit familiar to After Effects and there we work with masks and you also have that somehow in Premiere. You can see we just can just cut out a piece from the video by just uh, dragging these points around like that guys. Now you can see that we have just uh, keyed out a piece. Now what we can do is add a um, new video layer, uh, video layer one, and then just add this one on video layer two, and then something would show behind this keyed out uh, pointer actually. I'm just going to delete that for now. So that's what keying is all about. Just deleting something from your video. You can delete the Luma, you can delete something on the RGB, uh, the color, uh, something on a different, so with a different mat. For example, if you're going to add a mat on video channel one, then just take a look at the difference and what the difference is that you're going to key out. So that's how it works, guys. Then the next thing is the noise and grain. That is something we will work with. That means we're going to add something like dust and scratches, or we can add some noise. And not only on the global uh, video, actually, we can also choose to add noise only to the alpha channel or also to the HLS, that's the U lightning and saturation. And we can choose which channel we want. So maybe only on the U or maybe only on the lightning. 
etc etc guys so uh, for every folder like again with the blur we have here at noise also different types of ways where we can add that noise too all right guys then the next folder is the perspective folder and this is also something interesting especially for the next lesson where we're going to create a 3d title we all know that premiere doesn't have a 3d engine inside of it so the actual 3D that we create in Premiere isn't a real 3D, but we can create that it has the impression of a 3D. And you can do that with, for example, the basic 3D. Like here, you can swivel your uh, canvas or a title or whatever you want. And that uh, gives us the impression that this is actually in a 3D space, but it's not. Uh, then we have a bevel alpha. That means we're going to create an edge to it uh, so that it looks like we have a 3D object. Um, we can create a drop shadow. Everything that has to do with a, with a perspective or a 3D space, actually. Then stylize, guys. Also something that uh, we're going to work with a lot. Uh, that could be a glow. We can create brush strokes, etc., etc. Something I use a lot is the rough and edges here, guys, which is something very cool. I'm just going to select the roughen color. That means we're going. I'm going to roughen the border with a color. Now it doesn't look very professional or very good in like this, uh, but again, if you use it right with the right mixture on the on the right situation, actually, you can really make use of this uh, effect very much. So this folder is to stylize something. Uh, we also have texturize, and that is also something we're going to use later in this course. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to add a texture to a title, and that is something very cool. Like, for example, uh, add some grass or some ground or some clouds or something like that to a title. And then we've got time here, guys. Also something very cool here. We can actually bring the video out of sync. Uh, for example, I'm just going to add the echo effect to it, and I'm going to increase the echo effect so that you can see the singer right here so this is actually from a different point in time of this of this clip and when i play this now uh, we have very easily created an effect uh, where normally um, we had to create two video layers so you can see them twice here so it's actually blended uh, together now normally we would create two different layers of the same video layer so let me just do that for example like that and then we would shift that and then we would play with the opacity. And you can see this is a lot of work while actually we can just do that with one plugin. Then after a time, we've got transform again, something we can use a lot. Now I'm talking about feathering the edges. Then we've got flip guys. For example, when you have filmed over the axis of 180 degree, you can just add a horizontal flip to it and just look what that does. It just flips the image. <laughs> Uh, simple effect, but again, something that I use a lot when I went over that 180 degree axis. Um, most of these things we're not really going to use. We got the camera view, which is some kind of the After Effects virtual camera. Uh, I'm not going to use that much because it's a very slow effect. You can see that on the icons right here. Uh, when it has this one, it has an, it's an accelerated effect, which means it works fast. This one is an old effect. We can basically do the same with basic 3D and other things within the perspective. You can see that basic 3D is an accelerated effect. So I'm mostly going to use that instead of the camera view here, guys. All right, then we've got transition. Uh, as the name says, we're going to create a transition. It will always go to black, actually. Uh, I'm just going to add this gradient wiper, for example. And you can see that it goes to black. And that is actually because of the video layer down below. That means we're going to fade out the top layer and it will reveal the uh, video channel one. Then that is how we can create uh, transitions, actually. Um, we're going to use, not going to use that much in this course, uh, but just so you know, it's there. Then we've got utility, Sinian converter. That's for color grading again. Then we've got uh, finally video, which doesn't do much, actually. It just shows you the time code, for example, on top of your video or the clip name. All right, guys, that was it for um, this lesson here. Uh, there's one last thing I would really like to show you, actually. When I head over to Stylizer, and, for example, I'm going to add rough edges to it. I'm just going to make that, again, enlarge this value here. There we go. In this course... It's always going to be about mixing effects. So for example, I'm also going to add alpha glow to it. And look what that does. I'm just going to uh, create this value a little bit more. Now this doesn't look very well, but to create this kind of effect, you see that we have to add two effects. And that is how it works, guys. It seems like there are not much plugins in here, but 
when we can combine multiple plugins or effects, we do can create a lot of things. There are actually no boundaries here. We have unlimited possibilities of creating something within Premiere by just mixing the right effects. Something which is also very important here, guys, is the way you order your effects. For example, if I would add the alpha glow first, you will see that it won't apply the roughen edges. And that's because we are first going to glow and then we're going to roughen the edges. That means we're going to roughen the glow, but we can't really see any glow here. So that's why we have to put the glow beneath that one. All right, guys, so that's it for this lesson right now. I want to thank you a lot for watching. And in the next lesson, we're going to create a 3D title. And as I've said before, there is no 3D space in Premiere. But anyhow, we are going to create a 3D title. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. Thank you.